Hello, and welcome back. I thought we were done, guys, but it's not there just yet. No, we are here at the Caffeine.TV after show for DreamHack Winter 2019, and I welcome and thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in. I, of course, am Scrawny, or Connor Durvin. I had a pleasure of hosting this whole event, something I hadn't done before, and luckily, I had some people that really helped me out with that, one of which is still by my side, oh. that being... Christine, Whoa. but we also have Hugo added to the tally. Hugo, I don't think many people realize, but uh, we're actually pretty good friends, you and I. Yeah, you're all right sometimes. Oh sometimes. my God. Listen, Hugo, <laughs> I would say settle down because you don't know what I have for you. You don't know what's in store just yet. In fact, neither do our viewers. So let's just go ahead and uh, run a quick bit of what's up. We're going to be talking with the champions of DreamHack Winter. Nobody other than Fours, of course. We will have Little and Jerry joining us shortly to talk all sorts of stuff. Then we'll move into a news segment. What's new, we ask, and all sorts of subjects there that we won't divulge into until we get there. You guys got to wait. Good things come to those who wait, of course. And then there's a quiz at the end of it. So oh. that, Hugo, that is where I make you look like a fool. So watch that silver tongue. Why don't you? <laughs> now, why couldn't that camera, have been on yeah, camera? Yeah, yeah. Glad <laughs> the camera didn't catch that. We'll keep that off guard. Uh, yeah, so <sighs> guys, uh, we're done, man. We're done. We're done the event. CSGO is finished here, but uh, obviously we still have some more hanging out to do. This is a really fun event to hang out at as well. I feel like every time I find myself in Yongshiping, it's always a pleasure. Um, but just before we get too wild, let's, let's just quickly ask, right? Are you guys surprised with the results of this event? I think so. I think it's fair to say that we did not expect Fours to completely, you know, demolish and win the entire thing when you have Heroic, when you have just so many, just so many teams at this tournament. Yeah, I, I'd I'm say surprised. even one of the surprises that, you know, not a team that I thought would win this event, but a team that I thought that would at least get playoffs was Super Jimmy, man. They looked really good on that first day and, and with so much hype around the Orpa Yampi, I expected a little bit more from them. They fell flat against Crazy. Yeah, those two nuke games, right? I feel like that was really their demise was the fact that they only got to play nuke. They had that day off. How many teams always talk about that? How like the day off can sometimes screw them over? Um, take fours as the contrast. They, they played all the maps possible to get to this, this, this grand finals yeah. and then turn around and win it. And you heard Jerry say it himself, the confidence that they were able to build for themselves just to be able to take the duels that they were taking. I mean, these things definitely matter for sure. How do we feel about Godsend? I mean, they went 2-0. That was kind of on par, seeing as how they performed in their, in their most recent LAN coming into this one. Um, but then after that 2-0, they... Uh, Personally, I feel like they disappointed this morning. Yeah, we were having this conversation earlier, right? In, in the sense of like, they've only played one land prior to this with this roster that they clean swept as well without dropping a map. So losing their first map here, you could definitely see some tilt in their, in their players, you know, losing that massive comeback to fours on Nuke. Uh, bit, uh, bit annoying there, I guess, but they've got to they've yeah. got, got work through it. It's a learning process, right? Sometimes gonna, you don't always win. I'm going to bring out a couple of little guys for us here, right? Let's, let's, let's open up the conversation. We've got the winners of DreamHack win. Yes. Jerry. <laughs> Wait, which way are they coming from? Uh, Behind you. Oh, where are they? Where are Jerry, they? They're over here. Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. Jerry. What's up, guys? Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to sit here. We put out the nice furs for you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll jump onto the arm of the couch. My mother always told me not to do this, but she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> she might be watching you. Yeah, she probably is. You did it, guys. You want a dream hack yes. open? You've lifted a trophy. You've got a big smile on your face, little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it was insane, man. Do you? I mean, do you feel like? I feel like we've interviewed you, Jerry, so much this weekend that that it's it's tough to pick your brain, you know. So I just want to say, like, let's just keep this easy. I think what a lot of people tune into these shows for is to kind of maybe get get to know you guys a bit more, um, yeah. especially for the English speakers. Like, it's it's. I, I said it right before I sent you off. Like, you're a really good. Uh, portal to what happens inside Fours. And Fours is a team that I know personally, I love watching to play. So it's nice to get to see you guys win, but also get to s meet you. Um, we will dump into that a bit later on, but uh, I just want to ask, with the CS this weekend, what surprised you the most in terms of your opponents? Which, which team do you find was either weaker than they should have been or stronger than they should have been? Like, what were the big surprises for you? Uh, I think uh, the biggest surprise that we won that. <laughs> I mean, tournament. But uh, I think uh, most unco uncomfortable team for us was Heroic. Uh, I didn't want to play against them. Yeah. Uh, so as crazy won them, I feel like, okay, okay, it's good. We're not going to face Heroic in this tournament. So I was pretty happy. And I think the 
a f most comfortable team was actually tricked because uh, as you see before as you seen before we had 7 to 1 in head to head scoreline uh, and uh, i thought like okay if you if we have seven wins what's the problem to win a best of three now <laughs> so yeah. we did that Good. and i thought that uh, and the fact that uh, we won got sent from 12 to 7 score that gave us a lot more confidence and we were like we were really all excited, I think. Yeah, that was got, a huge map. I've got a question for you. Yeah. How did you and all your teammates meet? Was this like an organization thing, finding each other, all the talent, and making a team in CIS? Or did you guys organically like meet each other through mixes and what have yeah. you? Uh, was, it, was it one by one or more of like uh, a group coming you together? literally ask about like how did we get the team together? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Uh -huh. uh, so I've been playing with Facecrack and Little. He's my coach now. It was a Spartak team, like uh, in 2017. Yeah, that's when I started my pro career. And then I joined Force after uh, Spartak team disbanded. And we had Kibakin and we had uh, some other players, but in the end, uh, Force uh, signed us and uh, we were playing like one minor, or yeah, we played one minor in Bucharest, and then we uh, almost disbanded. We kicked Kibakin, uh, and we had Kucher actually. Yeah, we had yeah. Kucher. It was all the good player from Hellraisers, if, if you know that. So we had uh, Kucher and Kibakin, then both being kicked. Uh, and uh, I think the first guy who joined us was Fleet and uh, first two guys. I mean, uh, Fleet and Xi Power, because uh, they were friends in real life. They visited a lot of, uh, a lot of local lands, uh, and they knew each other already. So this duo joined us, and then we had a striker. It uh, was our coach. He's from Kazakhstan, and he Andrew, I think you have a little bit mistake, because uh, first was joined Xi Power, Xipower? and yeah, okay. and after we will try to find someone, <laughs> someone else. We yeah, are. Maybe. We've tried to find because it was uh, as soon as I remember speed dog, Too many players. Yeah, we, we, we too tried, many players we in a row. So we have uh, four players and don't know who will be fifth. And after this one, it's uh, become a uh, fleet. Yeah, after we tested a lot yeah. of players, but uh, the main thing when we cooperate together, we had a boot camp in Moscow, and we tried to qualify for minor that was in Poland, Pilgi Krakow, if I'm not mistaken, but we lost. I can oh, I will lost to Pro 100 Pro Store in Russian, and uh, it was. It was. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then after we just lost the minor qualifier, we just qualified for PLG Abu Dhabi LAN, and that was our first yeah. international LAN ever. And we lost uh, to Many again, Fnatic again for good. in overtime on Inferno, <laughs> right? What, what? First time international, we are one South Korea. Oh no no no! I mean Force roster. Ah, yeah. Sure. roster, yeah. So we went to Abu Dhabi and uh, we beat G2 in group. And after we beat G2, as I said before, psychology grown up. Yeah, big and time. Think like, okay, we can do it. Yeah. Like, we just won G2. Whoa. What's next? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, what's next? Next we're Fnatic. And uh, we won first map against them. It was Mirage. We won 16 to 14. Then we lost overpass 16 to 3. And then we had three overtimes on Inferno. Yeah. yeah, we lost it. But after that tournament, I knew we can beat good teams. You know, I can tell how much like each of these wins really did boost your psychology and like your mental state because y you always recall them so well. You know, you always remember them very well. Uh, it's obvious when you talk about it. So yeah. I, that's that to me is proof of what you say. Yeah. Um, so that's a good explanation as to the history of what you guys have done as a team, how you got here. Uh, but DreamHack wants us to talk about something a little bit different. All right. They want to ask you about an alternate reality. So imagine a world where you never found Counter-Strike, or Counter-Strike okay. didn't exist, <laughs> Okay. right? Um, there's a VT that's gonna go with it, so we're gonna take a quick look at the video. If Counter-Strike weren't there for me, I have no idea what I would be able to do. I don't know if I was going to try to play other games, because I just play a lot. Play another game? I don't know, actually. I have no idea, it's so hard. I think at the moment I just would focus a bit more to my studies because I'm still studying and playing at the same time, so it's kind of hard. So right now I would probably be still studying because I left the college because of uh, I became a professional player and it was a hard decision for me. I don't feel bad about it, I'm, I'm happy that I chose this, but at the same time I miss 
you know, studying and I, I, I really liked it, I enjoyed it. I haven't really thought about it since, like, when I came after school, I was already living of this. Then I never really came to that point where young people have to choose their path. I didn't really choose mine yet. I think we are really young, so I don't need to go worry that, that much with, like, future jobs. I can do it in the college after. It, it kind of makes you, like, live it. Live your life now and don't worry about the future, right? I will always be in eSports. Every day of the for the rest of my life I will be in eSports, doing something eSports related. If I'm gonna be a player, coach, an organization owner or whatever, I'm, I'm gonna be in eSports because eSports is my life. All right, so a lot of those guys has had the answers along, oh, I'd find another game or I would still be in eSports because it's all that I love. Um, I pose the question to you, Jerry. What's your answer? My answer that I would play Dota 2. Yeah? Mm. Because, because I've been playing that since 2012 from beta, beta test or whatever you call it. And I was playing that for three years. But the thing is, <laughs> when uh, Counter-Strike was developed in Steam, I know we're talking about universe where there's no Counter-Strike, yeah, sure. but I was just telling hey, you the story. Whatever your answer, man. Uh, yeah, and uh, I bought, I, I pre-ordered that actually, and then I played two gun games, and I thought, it's a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not play this. Uh, then I went to Dota for three years, and wow. actually it's maybe helping me to be AGL in Counter-Strike because every discipline in esports giving you some skills, some mental knowledge. So I may, maybe I learned some AGL things from there and it gives my brain some boost. So my answer is I would be still esports player because I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a guy who's sitting uh, in a PC 24 hours. Actually, no, you have. Uh, okay, I, I, I like to. I, I like to walk. I, I like to spend my time with friends and family, etc. But uh, I still, I still love playing because I've been playing since I was four. Yeah. Four years. So my follow-up question would be like, let's say video games are off the table. Let's say you're not allowed to use esports as a job. Or did, was there any kind of job before esports? Like, as you were playing, you may have been playing games, but did you have a side? You know, did you have a little project or uh, other interests? Yeah, uh, I, ha I had some. I had some projects in real life. Uh, I have a friend that we were trying to make some business things, but without proper education, education, it's kind of hard. You can't just make a business from nothing. Yeah. But we had some crazy ideas, so we can maybe. Uh, I, I can't. I, I can I can't think. I can proper say it in English, but it was like fun. A fun uh, when uh, where, where people can donate money, so they will go to the children that is sick. Okay. And by Russian, uh, ac work. according to Russian laws, uh, phones like that, they can get uh, twelve percent of that donations to their self so they can uh, boost uh, this fun this fund but uh, we, uh, we we lost that idea because my friend went to military forces right okay <laughs> so your alternate universe would be creating a charity fund yes for uh, but that's but the first thing but uh, main thing it's a uh, business something yeah. I can do myself because Jerry, I like it you make it very easy to like you as a person <laughs> I want you to know that man there's not many people would answer that little Jerry, before before Jerry. you played as coach or before you were coaching you were playing CS yes yeah, sure. yeah. yes was there something before that uh, yeah because uh, uh, when you ask Jerry what you should to do in uh, if you think that CS go should be no yeah I think first time uh, of course it will be a military force okay and uh, I think uh, not esports not for me, right? But in the end of my career, I'm playing uh, I don't know very well. So unfortunately, it's not like in Russia. Thirty years, you just uh, retire. everyone everyone retire. say yeah retire. Everyone right. say you retire. It's too late <laughs> for me. Mm. So do know it's my future maybe coach maybe something else but uh, now i'm in sports and it's uh, I'm, I'm very happy right good that's good to hear i'm glad both of you guys are happy you should be it was an awesome weekend for you you got your win and i'm excited to see what is next for you not only in epicenter at the end of this year but also moving forward with 2020. i think that this year was big for you guys a lot of people Definitely. now know who you are as people and as a team and i think a lot of people are cheering for you so I know the three of us definitely are. Yeah. Uh, but that's about all we have for you. So I just want to say thanks again Thank for you. joining us here. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats on the win. Congrats. And Thank you. Good shit. Until our... <laughs>
third time lucky. <laughs> Until we meet well again, done. guys. Until we meet again. Congrats you can just leave again, the mic here. Guys. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. You sure you don't want to take a cinnamon roll to go? <laughs> <laughs> take a handful, right? I see Flit over there eyeballing these cinnamon rolls. Yeah. <laughs> you want one? No? No. Okay. <laughs> Bring him one. <laughs> Jerry always looking out for his teammates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So that was fun. Uh, I love those guys, but dudes. I'm just you them, you I combined goose guys and, and dudes, dudes together. Mm, yeah, goose. Efficiency. Uh, yeah. He's done far too much talking. <laughs> Working on it. Yeah, we're, we're nearly there. But uh, not everything was smooth and buttery here at DreamHack Winter. We've actually got some fails of the tournament queued up for you guys. So let's take a look at these ones. We've got three, of course. Number three, that one being poor old Otto. Esperanto jumping into his scope as he went for that pick on train. I mean, this. Bit of a fail, but I put the blame on Esperanto. Yeah, yeah it, why would you run into in front of Otto like that? He's just trying to kill the enemies, you know? It sucks as well when you go for one of those shots and you don't even kill the person behind. At least <laughs> right. get, get the, the collateral CT yeah. as well, yeah. right? Get two for one, you know? Ah, uh, number two. Number two. This one, if I'm not mistaken, should be Yampi, SJ's rising oh. star. Uh, or should we say falling <laughs> star? He kind of hit the dirt on that A site. I did, he, did he not look at his health or well, did he get did he shot in the damage? Or what? Yeah, damage? Like, I, I can't even tell. I, I see no blood splatter. There was an assist from Crystal, but he didn't slow down in the air, so yeah. I think he just had low health. Yeah. He's just feeling himself there. Yeah. He's feeling real yeah, he's good, vibing. you know? Yeah. Maybe a little too much. <laughs> uh, and then number one is Mike Kaleli. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sure we can all think of a few Mike Kaleli fails, but this is the freshest one off the press. This is just, uh, what, land jitters? I mean, he's not supposed to be stressed. Yeah, you know, to be fair, it was a nice reaction. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice quick shot. If only shot. it was an enemy. Well, if only it was a CT, you know? I mean, Makes unlucky. you wonder if somebody called, like, oh, there's someone right behind you. And then it's <laughs> instinctual. I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. We have been there. It happens. It does. Which one of those three is the worst to you guys? Do you agree with, uh, with the ranking? Uh, I, well, I don't know the health of Yampi. I want to know more about that, yeah. right? If you get right. shot midair, it's not really his fault. But uh, if not, if he didn't look at his health and he just jumps off instead of falling onto the little yellow slide, yeah, I, I'd go with number two then. I think I'd go with Yampi too, just because it's more funny, you know? That's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it's such a feels bad ah, man, you know? Done. Yeah. He's just craters. I think cratering is like the, the worst feeling. Mm. You know, you TK your teammates, sometimes you're just like, you should have not been there. You know, you can put the blame on the other person, but then if you just fall off the rafters. Yeah, see, see Connor, Connor can, you know, <laughs> provide a bit of evidence here, but I am awful at ladders at CS, and I, there's, really a, lot of, there's oh a lot my. of clips. It doesn't oh. make sense. I'm so good at movement, but my ladder movement is awful, and I have died and popped off yeah. from full damage. Too many times to oh, count. Oh no. Yeah, it's not good. It's you not guys should dry good. run, you know, like the double stacking pop yeah, dog yeah, controls, yeah. Yeah. like stuff like that. Well, then we have to work together and. <laughs> <laughs> None of I that. prefer it when he's on the other team, really. Okay. okay. Let's, let's move the guy, let's move this one along, guys. We've got, uh, we've got some news to get into. Topic five What's new? We're talking news in Counter Strike. Um, production, do we have a VT with this one, like our, like our other subjects, or are we just going into it? Cool. So I'll bring up the first subject, guys, and, and that's just going to be, we're going to talk some rosters. Not rosters that have been fully flushed out, not rosters that have been announced in any regards, but if I say to you, Dignitas and mm. CSGO, where does your head fall with that? It goes to so many different places. I think that org has been trying to make their name in CSGO for quite some time, but the rumors are uh, about the Swedish Interesting. team. Interesting. Yeah. And not any Swedes. Yeah. Some legendary Swedes. Definitely legendary. I wonder how much of it is, is okay, right, guys, we're going to become the best team in the world, or how much of it is, let's play for fun, you know, reunite, right. see what we can do, no expectations, just kind of freestyle it. I really want to know where their head's at in terms of if that, if that is actually going to be a roster, what they have planned. And did you guys know here also that Fifth Florin was originally in the in the rumor in the mill really? as well Coming for this back. for this original like eighty seven right. and O NIP team? But now I think the rumor is is he's going to be like a general manager or like right. a coach type. And I could see that. Like I could yeah. still see personally. Like the moment I hear this this this, this potential roster being talked about, I, I know that half of it is just about nostalgia. Um, it's about seeing those guys all play back together. I mean, there's no doubting that Forrest is still an incredible player. I think Get Right could have some more in the tank. We saw Freiburg come back with a couple other teams that you know was making waves, yeah. and, and I thought I thought before before that uh, that optic lineup disbanded. That's where he was playing, correct? Heroic, heroic, heroic. 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 Uh, I mean, he was on optic before that, though, with Matisse. Yeah, they were remember? jumping yeah, around, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and he was optic. looking promising. Like there, there was there was times where it was almost I saw him get a thirty bomb only yeah. like a month before that that whole project kind of ended. So, but for Florin, that would have been like okay, it's all in nostalgia. <laughs> no offense, Fifi, but. 
uh, if he's in there in their managerial role, if he's trying to use some of the experience he's gained by working with Twitch and whatnot, and then moving that back into esports, then I completely understand it, and, and I get behind that one. Sure. Yeah. I just want to see what they can do. Really. All right. Yeah. If they're still good as a five. Now, subject number two, guys. There's been an update not too long ago. Uh, kind of controversial. Um, there's two elements to it as well, right? We've got the gun changes, of course, in terms of the, the Krieg, the Aug, uh, your Fomus and M4, uh, excuse me, your Fomus and Galil. But I want to focus at least first on the skins. Skins are a controversial topic. We heard the players talk about it in a, in a bit of a video earlier. Um, where do your heads stand on this? How do you guys, how, how does skins in CS, player ones, make you feel? You know, I like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah, obviously there needs to be adjustments. Obviously there needs to be some tweaking here and there to make everyone as satisfied as, as can be. But I like the initiative, you know? I think the possibilities are now endless. Do you think as the competitive as... play though? Yeah, why not? Mm, why not? I mean, okay, let's bring in the view model or CL, yeah. what's the command? CL underscore is zero. Model zero? Yeah, yeah. that one. <laughs> that, that command yeah. in for competitive play, you know? I mean, uh, people have already, face it, and ESCA have both disabled it. Yeah. So you can still have it equipped, but it's disabled. So that is possible to do right. uh, in some way without a command. But, but then, yeah, it'd be nice if Valve added something. My head falls into matchmaking. You know, like, if I don't see, I don't see Valve removing it. I mean, no, it doesn't make sense, I, but... They so, didn't remove the R8, they just nerfed it into... Exactly, yeah. Oblivion. It's like sometimes when, when, when problems are introduced to Counter-Strike, they're not necessarily solved. They're just kind of tweaked and then no longer too big of an issue to really deal with, right? We, 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 we focus onto the, onto the next bigger problem. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, if Valve aren't going to disable this in matchmaking, then they will continue to be a problem in at least matchmaking games. And if they have a rule for matchmaking, they're going to have the same rule for the major. A lot sure of the enough. time, Valve do like to do that. So that's kind of scary if we play a year of tournaments with no skins, like DreamHack disabled yeah. it, loads of Orcs have disabled it, and then you go into the major and suddenly everything's different. That could be kind of scary. Mm. I hope that's not the case. I'm curious to see whether map makers start to change things around, whether Valve kind of takes a stance. You know, I think there are solutions out there. I don't have them, and luckily, it's not my job to find them, uh, <laughs> but I am a ready and willing participant in terms of testing out solutions. So hopefully we find something. But subject number three is uh, another potential roster in the making. This one, of course, being OG. Valda, NBK, ooh. Juicy, right? Yeah. Definitely juicy. And I mean, we even had that youngster, Yompi. We kind of touched about it on the desk, the possibility of this youngster from Philan rejoining Alexi B in this OG project. I don't think that rumor is uh, coming to be as true as it, as it no. was a couple weeks ago. But, you know, I'd like to think that the possibility is still there. There's so much brain power as well on that team. Think yeah. about that. MBK, XIGL somewhat. You know, you've got uh, Lexi B, XIGL for Ents, and then you've got Valde, who even took it over on his hand for North, North for a bit, he and he yeah. still kept up with his performances. Everyone was like, oh no, Valde, Valde IGLing, he's going to drop off, he's not going to frag. He's, he was still fragging at the latter end of North while still uh, calling at the same time. Yeah, so. doing well enough. If, if I have yeah. my way with that roster, it's Valde, don't do anything but frag. Click. Like, <laughs> focus on that crosshair because dude, there's so much potential there. there. I mean, and unfortunately, I feel like the conversation's fallen away from Valdo. It has. I mean, he's been that uh, in-game leader for so long now, and, and his, his form seems to have fallen off a little bit, but as soon as that pressure's off his shoulders, I'm sure he's going to get right back into yeah. it. I just hate being in this place in Counter-Strike and seeing all of these either free agents or players sitting on benches waiting to get back into the mix. I feel like there's more now than ever. Um, and that's why this news is so exciting, because obviously there will be new rosters coming out for 2020. Uh, Counter-Strike's not going anywhere, yeah. and neither are these guys. So, and who there's knows so what? much new talent, like at, in all of these yeah. opens so yeah, far this year. All at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Roy. Think about Roy. Roy. Mate, I didn't even know who this dude was. Old. He's dropping yeah. 35 kills versus four. Ridiculous. Like, wow. Ridiculous. Wow. Right, and guys. it's happened every open. Yeah. Every open, yeah. yeah. That, that's the beauty of DreamHack opens, yes. is it's always such a good first stepping stone. I mean, literally one year exactly was, was Ence's first big event uh, in terms of walking away with the trophy, and they yeah. won that one here. So how cool is that? Bravado too at the time, although who knows where they went. Yeah. Uh, still an NA. Uh, <laughs> of course, we've got one more thing, guys, one more thing. And now you are in the hot seat, hot seat, hot spot whatever you want to call it. Potter seems comfortable enough. We're already <laughs> delving into the treats, the delicacies. So I've got three questions for you guys. She's this eating, so she doesn't have to answer any. Yes, smart. It's not fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's our Swedish quiz, uh, oh, which right. includes Swedish words. So Swedes out there, don't laugh. I'm trying my best, guys, OK? And well, if you don't speak Swedish, that's just your fault. Uh, here's question number one, all right? December 13th, Sweden celebrates the Lucia holiday with a traditional 
procession. What is the most iconic object worn by the person dressed up as Lucia, the head of said tradition, the procession? Is it A, a flower crown, B, a crown of electric candles, or C, a crown of thorns? Don't answer yet. Ooh. Oh. Okay. I said don't answer yet, and then I think, wait, how am I going to now stop you guys from answering? <laughs> so uh, I didn't think the format through, which means it's a rock, paper, scissors for the first question of who gets the answer first, and if you get BO1? it wrong, the other person has a BO1? chance. BO1? BO1, yeah. On BO7. go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Uh, <laughs> Hugo. C, a crown of thorns. That is absolutely Incorrect. Wrong. B. Correct. Yes. What? <laughs> Can I tell you why I know this? Tell me. Sweden and candles are makeup Lady, sure, yeah. beautiful Wilma. She told me that in Sweden, they love candles. I mean, Hugo, oh. there was a bunch of candles on the casting desk. Yeah, now that I think about that, yeah, mm. I sat up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Now, so that's one Potter, zero Hugo. Woo -woo. Uh, the next one, since I should have Whoa. talked format before we got into it, all right? The next one is the first person to knock themselves on their helmet with their weapon of choice. We've got <laughs> axes or swords. Potter, would you like to change? Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Two axes, knock yourself in the noggin. Uh, whoever does it first, that's who gets the answer. If you bring a bottle of cola to the Christmas celebration, you will most likely offend the Swedes. What should you bring <laughs> instead? A, Yulmus, B, <laughs> lemonade, or C, Fladerblumsaft. That's a great pronunciation. That was great, that was good. Hugo Byron. Fladerblumsaft. Fladerblumsaft is incorrect. Oh. It just, it was the coolest name. Yeah. Poots? Uh, B. Oh, I thought A would be too Incorrect. easy. I yeah. thought that was way too obvious. Clearly not. Yeah. Yeah, this is this. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. This is... Yulmus. Uh, Yulmus seems pretty heavy. Or Scrawny is an applicable name, because I couldn't pick this up with one hand. <laughs> Here we have some... Yulmus. What is it? Is it alcoholic? Would you like to it? try it? Because there are three yeah. cups in here. Ooh, it's okay. not alcoholic. Okay. If uh, It's it's not just any Yulmus, but it's uh, Apot Karns Yulmus. Oh. You must. Oh, well. <laughs> you must. Would you guys both like to try some? Yes, right, please. Please take the cups. Okie dokie. So, yeah, it is carbonated, clearly. Whoa, ho, ho. Whoa, ho, ho. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. steady, Hona. Wait. Can we zoom in on the pour? Oh, oh the cameramans are already on it, dude. I don't. I should have known. You guys ready? Oh, oh. we're playing dangerous <laughs> games in Yang Shibing. Someone drop a mint in there. I feel Mentos. the bottle no longer being intense, so we're good to go, guys. Here we go. All right. I'm going to take one cup. Is this just Coke? Is that all that is? Is it just no. Swedish Coke? No. It says if you bring that to the party, you're going to yeah. get in trouble. Yeah, so it's just, it, it's a Swedish version. I feel like I've had Yulmus. Can now that I think about it. Can somebody in the chat confirm whether there's licorice in Yulmus? Because I smell licorice. Cheers. Bottoms up. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Very bubbly. Hey, yeah, I see what you mean with right? the licorice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not overwhelming. Yeah. I don't really like, like licorice. A Whoa! Oh, hey. Hey. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, is my friend. Is this Pika? It's question number three, guys, and you're not going to get to know what it do is. Do I take the whole basket? My no. question to you is, which of these pastries do Swedes associate with December? Oh. Um, You've got three options. Not, oh. do, we, do we pick one? I don't want read them Thanks out? anyways, Wasta. I'm going to tell you that... Yeah, okay. So uh, the, the answer to this question, right, okay. is in this pile. You're going to stand here for a second. It's okay. Would you like to sit? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so the, one, of these three, one of these three pastries is the answer to the question, guys, which is which of these three do the Swedes associate with Christmas in December? Who They're, goes first? Pardon? Who goes first? Uh, Hugo, you do. I'm going to pick the one Potter's holding. Cause it's, got, it's got snow on it, you know? It's okay. Christmas snow. All right. No, oh, that's a cinnamon bun. I'm going to pick the one Hugo's holding. <laughs> Hugo? Oh, that is also me? wrong. That's a Danish pastry yeah, called Wienerbrod. Uh, so the answer is this bad boy up here in the front. Ooh. Correct. Luce, the cat. Luce, made the with cat. saffron. Oh, wait. Everything this saffron is made. saffron and this is saffron? That's a lot of saffron pastries. Hey, man, listen, don't judge. Okay. It's the S for Sweden. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Uh, so that means that both of you guys got zero points for question two, zero points for question C. However, Potter, you started it off with one. Thanks, man. I'm a winner. Are you going to leave, Wasta, or are you going to wait? 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, we're done here. We've had such an awesome weekend of Counter-Strike, whether it's the matches, whether it's the interviews, or whether it's just hanging out with your friends. I hope that everybody who is here on site and who tuned in throughout the weekend also enjoyed themselves as much as I did, as much as we did. Thanks, and cheers. I can't wait to see you all again. I can't wait to be a part of another dream hack. It's been an awesome weekend. We bid you adieu. Thanks for tuning in to the Caffeine TV After Show. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>